A little nervous, Michael. Um, it's the first kind of senior final in charge of the Roscommon team. And in fact, John O'Mahony of Mio is in the same position. However, both of us have been there before us on the 21 level. So I think we'll cope with it. You must be very confident in the side after the win over Galway. The win over Galway helped us in a big way. We're optimistic that uh, we'll do well on Sunday. There's a like, determination in the camp and I think that'll see us through. Are you happy that your preparation has been as good as you would like? Everything has gone well. Uh, we prepared very hard and um, the training has been good, a good response. So I think that that will stand to us on Sunday. What would be your biggest worry about Sunday? Um, the biggest worry would be a windy day, Michael, believe it or not. I think if the elements are right, we'll have a good game of football. We have a good side. I think West are playing particularly well at the moment, so it'll be a good open game of football. I wouldn't like to have a windy day, Michael. Well, against Galway in the semi-final, everything went right for Roscommon. Great kick out by Gay and finding John Newton, whose fielding has been excellent at midfield. Up it goes. The layoff down towards Tommy McManus. Jersey ball, the shot, and goal! But the referee is going in. Is he giving the goal? Yes, he is. Notebooks out, he's giving the goal. Giving a very good advantage. Tony McManus then, the Roscommon scorer. Another fine catch by John Newton. His fielding has been impressive. Sensibly then laying it off to Tom Lennon. That's inside for Tony McManus. Frank Broderick is trying to get back. Still, there's another goal. And it's John Kelly, the scorer. Gay Sheeran is Ross Common's goalkeeper. Sometimes it can be a lonely life. Every game uh, is going to bring its new share of problems. And I think that anybody that's been playing at county level will surely get nervous and even now I'm going to be nervous on Sunday. Gay Sheeran, the Roscommon captain. Nice bit of fielding by Seamus Killoran. Up towards Paul Early, rebounded off uh, Peter Ford. Roscommon's Tom O'Donnell in for Tony McManus. And Tony McManus has given Roscommon a dream start. It tends to be the loneliest and there's nobody behind to blame and you have to start looking for an awful lot of help out the field. Communication, I think, has a lot got to do with, it, with the back line. You know? But when it comes back down to it, you're still there on your own. You know? Hello, Gay. You're in pensive mood there. I suspect, though, it won't be as quiet on Sunday. No, Michael, I, I think with uh, 20,000 people screaming and shouting round about here and both County of Scotland and Mayo looking for the Connacht title, uh, I'm afraid they're a little bit more disturbed than it is now. You know? Does it shake your confidence now if you make a slip during a game? Remember the 85 game, there was a goal scored here, I think, uh, against you by, by Mayo. Would that put you off? Uh, well... A goal in any game will always shake your confidence. That in, in 85, I think, if one, um, when, if one already took the shot and it was charged down. When the Mayo forward got the ball to the North Open, I think, picked it up. He was in the square and he put it away. And uh, I was talking to him after and he himself said that he was going to put it on it. Uh, a goal in any stage in the game is going to rattle your confidence. But if early on in the game, it helps because you can maybe you have plenty of time to work up and get back again, you know, and it, it, it does shake the confidence, but we have to work again it, you know. On Sunday, you'll have a second role, of course. You are the Roscommon captain, as you were in 86. I'm sure you'll be hoping for a better day on Sunday. Yes, I think uh, 86 will long live as probably the, the most disappointing day that we ever played here. Um, uh, as captain, it's great to be back secondly as captain. It's, it's a great honour to lead the county. And uh, it will have extra pressure on Sunday, but... Uh, Hopefully all 15 will share the pressure on Sunday. The one man who took his fair share of the responsibility against Galway was their experienced full forward, Tony McManus. Colman who had a very good first half. He's found the space closed down in the second by Gary Wynn. Junior McManus fisting it forward to Tony McManus. The Clannagall duo combining. Another score or two might well seal it for Roscommon. It goes off the post, over the bar. The air was punched by Delight and with Delight by Tony, who's got a goal and three points. A terrific performance. Started in 77 and the first four years I played in Connacht, I never lost a match. Yeah. And I thought, this is great, but since then, we haven't won a kind of final and this is eight years on Sunday and we're very hopeful we'll turn that around again. 
Why do you think that was, that from a situation like that, that Roscommon football seemed to go backwards very quickly? Uh, the all Ireland final in 80 seemed to have an awful effect on us. We, we took it very badly. We thought we had a chance of winning it. The following year, we got to the league final and didn't really prepare properly for it. And Galway gave us a fair bit of a hiding. And overall, then we slipped down to, against Sligo that year and football has gone back. I can't understand it. Well, that's a long time ago. You're bang on form again now for the Connacht final after beating Galway. And you played a very good game that day against Galway. Uh, the game went fairly well for me, especially in the second half. But Sunday's a different day and the ball mightn't run as well. When you're a forward, one or two breaks is all you need to have a good game. And that's what happened to me against Galway. Tony, what do you think of this Mayo team? I know that they've been made odds-on favourites to win here in Roscommon. Yes, Mayo were odds-on actually before the Connacht Championship started, which... I thought very peculiar at the time because I fancied ourselves at Galway. But now that we are in the final, they'll take a lot of beating. They're strong up the middle and they have injuries which definitely would, will affect them. But we were hoping that we can take them on Sunday. Tony McManus, one of Ross Common's most talented performers. Well, in Mayo, they have never lacked for good big men down through the years and they're looking to one of their tallest to play a significant role in tomorrow's final. However, when I met Liam McHale during the week, he was busily involved in a different sport. All right, kids, today we're going to try a layup. A layup. Can anyone do a layup? What we're going to do is you dribble in with your left hand, keeping your eye on the basket. Go left, right. Follow through, OK? Has everybody got that? Liam, can I interrupt you for a moment? and? Uh, have a little chat with you. You're not only a top-class inter-county footballer, but also a top-class basketball player. Where do you find the time for it all? Well, well, it is pretty demanding, but during the summertime when the championship starts, the football championship, it's not too demanding because I don't play that much basketball. In the wintertime, I have to train maybe five nights a week. It's kind of hectic, but you get through it. I like sport. I enjoy it. it keeps me off the streets. <laughs> Well, now, Liam, looking forward to the match on Sunday, I would venture that you'll be the tallest man on the pitch. How tall are you, as a matter of fact? About six foot five, I'd say, six foot five. Well, obviously, your height is beneficial to you. Uh, does basketball itself have an advantage when you're playing football? Well, it does, I think, true feeling in that. I, I have better hands, I think, than quite a few players because of, I practice all the time with my hands in the basketball. On the break here now, Liam McHale, better known as a basketball player, but known very well also as a Mayo County footballer to make it 6-2. So a very good start by the Irish Basketball League. Excellent ball fake by Liam McHale, set that up. He got his man to jump in the air. Once you jump, you can no longer guard the man with the ball. Liam McHale, who's a basketball international, plays for Team West of Ballina to another big strong man, Porrick Brogan. And now there's just two points. Martin Carney taking it out to Liam McHale. Can he stamp his personal authority on the game? Frank Noon to Jimmy Mohan, who's playing on the half line now. In a kickable position, he plays it inside for McHale. Have you any worries about going to Hyde Park in Roscommon? No, not really. A field is a field, and hopefully, we'll have enough supporters there to keep us going. Hopefully we get the right result. Would you be looking any further than that if you win on Sunday? No, we're just taking the Connacht final. We take one game at a time. That's what our manager, John, John O'Mahony, always says, just take one game at a time. It's dangerous to look too far ahead, I think. At the beginning of the 80s, I was asked to take over the Mayo Under-21 team. And uh, we won the All-Ireland in 1983 and were beaten in the final in 84. So I suppose that launched me onto the inter-county stage. Looking forward then, John, to Sunday's match, one thing about it is, for people outside Mayo and Roscommon, they're all saying they really don't know who's going to win. It seems to be a very unpredictable game. Well, the feeling I get, possibly, is that Roscommon have come through the tougher test and that they are favourites for the game as a result of that. We had easy wins over Leitrim and Sligo, and, and people are saying that we haven't been tested. And uh, as a result of that, I feel that maybe they feel we're underdogs, and that suits us fine. Now, one thing that is uncertain about Sunday's match is the fitness of John Finn. What will the situation be there? Well, it's John at the moment is, is quite doubtful, but obviously we wouldn't have left the place vacant if we didn't think he had a that he had a chance of making it. 
it's looking quite doubtful, but we're going to give him until Saturday evening to make a final decision on it. Yeah, I'm very happy with the progress we've been making so far. Uh, we've been training hard. We've done numerous nights out hard slogging. And I think the lads are fully confident that we can do well on Sunday. Now, you mentioned that you're living in Balahadreen, and that raises another issue. That, of course, is on the Roscommon border. You're nearly a Roscommon man. Uh, nearly, Michael, but not quite. Uh, it is, uh, like on any border, there is a lot of rivalry between Mayo and Roscommon, but uh, whoever wins on Sunday, and we feel it'll be us, we know that Roscommon will be behind us in the All-Ireland semi-final. Well, the games against Leitrim and Sligo weren't really a great test. They were, we, both games were easy enough. But we have the potential within the team to do well on Sunday. Like Roscommon are favourites, possibly after beating Galway, but we still we feel we can do it. Mind you, it has to be said, Hyde Park has never been a happy hunting ground for Mayo. No, but we won there three years ago, and hopefully we can repeat the thing again on Sunday. So everything is set then for the Connacht final tomorrow, and a reminder to you once again that the throw-in in that game is four o'clock. Well, the bad news for Galway Hurling fans today is that Brendan Linsky has been...